Beloved people of God, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For those gathered live and for those who will worship using this recording, welcome to Faith Lutheran Church's worship service on this beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Jane Baker and I have the privilege of serving this community of Faith Lutheran Church as their pastor. Just a few notes about the service. As, as we always do on Sunday morning, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. So please make sure that you have a bit of bread and a sip of either wine or grape juice ready. And if you're with someone else this morning, then please serve each other the bread and the wine. And if you're alone, then commune at the same time that I do. During the live service, if you have a prayer request, um, please type it in the chat box and then I will include it in the prayers. If you'd like more information about Faith Lutheran Church, you can contact me through our church website, and I'd love to chat with you. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome. We are a church that shares the living, daring, confidence in God's grace, liberated by our faith, we embrace everyone as a whole person with questions, doubts, complexities, and all. We are moved by God's grace to welcome all who have ever felt marginalized, no matter your gender identity, sexual orientation, age, race, ethnicity, marital status, or faith background. We welcome you as we worship, learn, and share Christ's love together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundance of God's grace. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources, and we fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all that we've done and all that we've left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. First reading this morning comes from the book of Judges, the sixth chapter. When the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the oak tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiezer, Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, replied Gideon, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I'm sending you. But the Lord, Gideon replied, the Lord, how, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest of the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I'm the least of my entire family. And the Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. And Gideon replied, if you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it's really the Lord speaking to me. Don't go away until I come back and bring my offering to you. 
And he answered, I will stay here until you return. Well, Gideon hurried home and he cooked a young goat and a basket of flour. He baked uh, some bread without yeast. Then carrying the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot, he brought them out and presented them to the angel who was under the oak tree. And the angel of God said to him, place the meat and the unleavened bread on this rock and pour the broth over it. And Gideon did as he was told. And the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the bread with the tip of the staff in his hand and fire flamed up from the rock and consumed all that he had brought. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he cried out, oh, sovereign God, I'm doomed. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Peace be with you, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid. You will not die. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Uh, Grace to you and peace from God, our creator, from Jesus, our savior, and from the Holy Spirit, our advocate. Amen. The readings for this day in the season of Epiphany um, have to do with God's call. Jesus finds Philip and he responds to Jesus' bid to follow me. Philip finds Nathaniel and Jesus calls Nathaniel to follow him. And he does. And then there's Gideon's call story in the book of Judges. Now, the only thing most of us know about Gideon is that some friends of his has put, have put Bibles in motel rooms all over the world. For some of us, there's also a, maybe a vague memory of him blowing a trumpet, but that's probably about most all of us remember about that or know about Gideon. Well, it's a story from Israel's ancient past before the temple in Jerusalem, before King David, before Israel had any kings at all. Gideon was one of Israel's judges like Deborah and Samson, charismatic leaders who by the spirit of God defended Israel from her enemies and inspired the people with their heroic deeds. Gideon was no hero at first though. Like the other judges, his abilities came from God, not from him. It took the visit of an angel and a sign from God to get him going. And even then the angel had to work pretty hard. And that's what I like about Gideon, his unabashed over queasiness about answering God's call. He's not brave. He kept coming up with reasons why not. And he would not budge without a display of divine pyrotechnics. I guess that's why I like him. If Gideon can get on board with God's plan, I'm pretty sure anyone can. The story of his call begins in a wine press. Have you ever noticed in the Bible that many good things begin with wine? 
I mean, who am I to disagree with that, right? So Gideon is hiding out in a wine press from the Midianites. This press was a big vat carved out of a rock in the ground, big enough for several people to stomp grapes in and large enough in this case to thresh wheat. Gideon was down there because every time the Midianites saw something of value, they galloped in on their camels and snatched it. They were a nomadic tribe who had plagued Israel for generations, and this particular trouble had been going on for about seven years. You see, they let the Israelites do all the hard work, harvesting the grapes, the wheat, the barley, the olives, and raising the livestock. Then when everything was processed and neatly stowed away, the Midianites like swooped in and took it all and killing anyone who got in their way. And the Israelites were left to starve. Seven years of this mayhem. The general understanding at the time was that God had sanctioned this violence because of Israel's idol worshiping. But seven years of punishment turned out to be long enough. So God sent a parole officer that remarkably looked like an angel to show Gideon a way out. Only the initial interview didn't go so well. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. That's how the angel greeted Gideon, who was in no mood for either flattery or religion. But sir, he replied through gritted teeth, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? It's kind of like the angel floated in and said, good morning, and Gideon retorted, yeah, well, what's so good about it? By his understanding, the way you know that the Lord is with you is that everything is going well. No starving, no violence, no living, cowering in fear, and no Midianites. Gideon wanted the God that he'd heard those miracle stories about. You know, the God of wonderful deeds, the God who brought Israel from Egypt out of slavery, not this God who stood by while people were robbed and slaughtered. Now, to the angel's credit, he did not tell Gideon that his people had brought the hurt on themselves. The angel just agreed that it was time for it to stop. And he commissioned, he or she, we don't know, uh, commissioned Gideon right on the spot. You do it, the angel said. Go with this strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites, which is not what Gideon had in mind. But, 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 but I, I'm not that strong. I mean, like, I'm least, I'm small. But, 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 but there's, there must be a hundred other Israelites with better resumes. I, mean, I was nearly suggesting something ought to be done. I didn't volunteer to do it. I mean, honestly, I'm not your man. I'm the least impressive guy in my family which by the way is the weakest clan in the whole tribe of Manasseh. Well, God's reply, but I'll be with you. And that was that. Gideon's qualifications didn't matter. All that mattered was his partnership with God, who does not call anyone to do anything without promising to go to. Still, Gideon wanted to make sure that was really God that he was dealing with. So he said, give me a sign that it's really you. Now, if Gideon had been a New Testament character, he might have gotten into a lot of trouble for that because in Christian scripture, people only ask for signs when they don't have any faith. In Hebrew scripture, on the other hand, it's perfectly all right to ask God for a sign. It's even considered a good idea to test the spirit to make sure that what is calling you is not coming from the dark side of the moon or from your own imagination. It's a good thing to make sure that it's really God. Well, I don't know about you, but I, I kind of like that approach. Uh, you know, just, just make sure first. So Gideon asked for a sign, telling the angel to just chill out, chill, rest. Well, he went inside to fix a meal. Now, the next part of this story is so arcane that there is, there's no reason why any of us should understand it. But what Gideon wanted to know was how the angel would consume the meal. If his parole officer slash visitor simply chowed down on the goat and the gravy and the bread, wiped his mouth and said, thank you, then Gideon would know that he was dealing with a bearer of fake news. But if the meal 
burst into flame and was consumed by fire, then he would know it was God. Don't ask me why it had to happen that way. Don't know. Maybe it was just how God ate dinner in those days. Gideon came struggling out of the house with his picnic basket piled full of grub. The angel told him to dump it all out on a rock and poof, the whole feast went up in smoke like a firework on the 4th of July. And the angel vanished from Gideon's sight. Now that's a sign. What did Gideon do? Well, the sign he begged for scared the bejeepers out of him. Oh my God, I'm doomed, he cried. I've seen the angel of the Lord like face to face. I'm guessing he might have said a cuss word or two, but that didn't make it into the Bible. Then Gideon built an altar to the Lord and called it, the Lord is peace. Now you'll have to read the book of Judges, chapter six, seven, and eight to find out the rest of the story. But spoiler alert, it doesn't go well for the Midianites. So what I wanna lift up this morning is grandfather Gideon's legacy to us. Not just his sassiness in the presence of God, and not his queasiness when the angel calls his bluff. Those are important parts of the story because they remind us um, that they, you know, we don't have to stop being human in order to start being gods. But the real beauty of the story for me is that Gideon became the sign he asked for. It was not the flambéed goat stew on the rock. That sign was for Gideon's benefit alone, so that he would know who was calling him. The real sign Gideon wanted was relief for his people, an end to the looting and pillaging and bloody violence, something that he could celebrate at that altar he named, the Lord is peace. God granted him the sign he longed for, and he was it. Gideon was the sign. By answering God's call, he would become it. And he would not just ask for it, he would be it, and he would do it. And that is a powerful legacy for all of us as we battle whatever your Midianites are for you. We sometimes miss God's wonderful deeds and ask God to show off by doing something spectacular. But be careful what you ask for because there's a very good chance that God will say, what a great idea, I'm all in, I send you. In my own story of my call to ministry, I've had doubts too. I didn't actually even take it seriously until my last year of seminary that God was actually calling me. And I've shared this before with some of you that in my first semester of four years of seminary, the very first semester, I actually bought a paperback study Bible because I didn't think I'd be using it or needing it for very long. Well, I still have and use that Bible that is literally worn to pieces. It's, it's literally in chunks and pieces and sections on my desk. I keep that and use that as a holy reminder from God. I remember thinking, you know, what if God was wrong? What if I'm not smart enough? What if I can't find a way to pay for this? What if it wasn't God calling me at all? What if others just saw in me, you know, the kind of gifts that uh, could be used in ministry, but just wanted me to consider the possibility? What if those same gifts could be used to chat with people at Starbucks and make lattes? You know, those kinds of questions can and do keep one up at night, especially if it's been a hard week in ministry. Some days making lattes looks pretty appealing. Gideon said, but, 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 I'm not that strong. I can't do that. Choose someone else. That other person is way more qualified than me. When Jesus says, follow me, in proclaiming the gospel in any capacity that you are able. What would you say? What will you say? Because we're all called to something. 
not that it matters because our qualifications are not the most important thing. Do you realize that God says, but, 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 too? Yeah. God says, but, 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 I will be with you. It turns out that is the most important thing. Amen. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will say, I who made the stars. darkness bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I Lord I have heard you calling in the night I will
as we gather in our homes yet together, let us offer our prayers for all in need, responding to each petition with the words of Gideon, Lord is peace. We pray for our neighborhoods, for those new to worship, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. And together we say, the Lord is peace. We lament the times <clears throat> when our churches have rejected collaboration with your worldwide family of grace. And we pray for your blessing on the Eastern Orthodox, Roman Catholics, Anglicans, Protestants, Evangelicals, and Independents, that all your people will follow your call to discipleship and grow deeper into our unity in Christ. And together we say, the Lord is peace. <clears throat> we pray for the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise, as wise stewards of the earth, our home. And together we say, the Lord is peace. We lament the occasions when our government has neglected the needs of the people of America and the calls for international cooperation. We pray for President-elect Biden, for Vice President-elect Harris, and for all our elected members of Congress, that they fulfill their obligations to uphold and extend the common good. And together we say, the Lord is peace. We pray for police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. And together we say, the Lord is peace. We lament the unspeakable sadness that has been unleashed by the coronavirus here and around the world. And we pray that you bring health to the sick, comfort to the dying, resilience to health workers, prompt vaccinations to everyone, and a lasting end to this scourge. And together we say, the oh, Lord, Lord is peace. We pray for all who are in trouble, want, or sickness. Comfort those, the oh Lord, who will die this day. We pray for those we name here, Don and Diane B, Amanda B, Grady B, Dan C, Courtney M, Pat M, Don M, Joan M, Sue P, Carol Q, Nick R, Ken R, Dan and Nate S, Tiffany T, Baby Avery, Sandra W, and those whose names we call out to you now. And we pray for our Rain, Rain McHugh, um, as she enters the United States Air Force tomorrow. And we give thanks God for her, for her life. And we ask that you wrap your loving arms around her and you keep her safe and bless the work that she will do. And may it be meaningful work for her and for our nation. And may all of these be held in your healing light and love. And together we say, the Lord is peace. We lament our private sorrows and our hidden fears, brief silenced, and we pray that as with Gideon, you help us to follow your call and be the answer that the world needs to see and hear through our actions and words. And together we say, the Lord, the Lord is peace. We give you thanks, O God, for all your goodness and tender mercies. And we ask you to accept our prayers and those prayers too deep for words. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Go ahead and unmute yourselves for that. <laughs> Should I do this one today? God's peace, everyone. All the peace, peace. 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 with everyone. everybody. Peace with everybody. Peace with you. God's peace to all. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday.
Oh, yeah, happy birthday. Hey, Walter. Peace, guys. <laughs> happy birthday, Anne. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. Hello, Anne. Cindy Kent, happy birthday to you, too. Oh, thank you. Peace be with you, Canute. Peace. Peace, Paul and Canute. Peace. Peace, Jerry and Cindy. Peace, Peace, Peace Paul and Canute. Peace, 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 Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the praise. Please go ahead and mute yourselves. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gathered with his friends, those who loved him and those who would betray him. And as they ate, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body and it's given for you. Do this, remember me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood and it's shed for you and it's shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, remember me. Send, we pray, your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that through them we might taste the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We ask this of, of you, Holy Parent, through Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please go ahead and unmute yourself so that we can pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in the messy form that it happens on Zoom. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your name. Your name. Come. Your name. Come. Your name. Come. 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 As it is in heaven. Give us today, today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from the evil. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. Now and, and forever. Now and forever. Amen. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. Beloveds, even as we are communing in our homes, we are together. Here is bread. Here is wine. Here is Jesus. Please share the body and blood of Christ with the ones you are with using these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're alone, then please commune with me now. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ and it's shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Receive this blessing. Remember that you are a beloved baptized child of God. And may you always hear God's call and follow Jesus. And as you leave this place of worship, may you be the light. May you be the light and the sign that the world needs as you live in God's love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 
few announcements this morning. Um, the outreach committee is meeting today at noon on the Zoom link was emailed to you on Friday. So um, join us at noon for the outreach committee meeting. And I invite you to join me for dwelling in the word on Thursday mornings uh, at 1130 AM for about a half hour. We discuss the biblical text for the coming Sunday. Um, and we pray and we share our thoughts on that text and we ask God to speak to us. So. Um, it's the same link every week, but it does come out in the Friday email. Ed Cole, uh, would you talk to us about the annual meeting and voting and all that, how that's all going to happen? Sure. Um, if you recall, last week we talked about um, that this would be normally our annual meeting month, and uh, but due to the circumstances that we're not meeting in, in uh, person, that we still have business to conduct so that we were gonna do it by uh, voting by mail. And so uh, the ballots have gone out. And so you should be receiving a ballot if you haven't already. And there are three things to vote for. Um, one is the, the budget for 2021. And then there are the uh, new council members and then our representatives for the Senate assembly. So uh, look for that ballot. Um, there will also be um, a couple pages of the budget in there so you can look at the budget. And the um, annual report is going to be emailed out to you. If you want a paper copy, there are some on the uh, table inside the front door at the Narthex where you can get a paper copy of it. So um, the ballots need to be in by January 31st. So please uh, get those ballots in and next Sunday, we'll give you another reminder. So please Barb, go. Barb, when will those hard copies be on the table? Um, They'll probably be on the table at the end of next week. By the end of the week, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, so you'll have at least a week before your ballots due to come in to actually look at the whole annual report yeah. and yeah. the year end financial reports from the congregation, yeah. So Debbie, talk to us about Sunday in two weeks, January 31st. Yeah. Um, Reconciling Works uh, is have designated January 31st as Reconciling in Christ or RIC Sunday. And this year coming together community is the theme for the Sunday. And uh, we'll be sharing worship with Pastor Peggy Yinkst from Gloria Day in Coos Bay. She was a uh, visiting pastor when Pastor Jane and her swapped uh, and she has been here, so we all know her. Um, let's see. That there uh, are, are the core reason uh, to have this coming together is to building a welcoming community to people of all sexual orientation, orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions, and all the human experience that they hold. We focus this RAC Sunday asking the question, how do we as the church come together and build community to express the fullness of God's diversity? So hopefully you'll be able to make us make it and we'll be sending a Zoom link out for the service when we get it. So it's pretty exciting to join together with a, another church to, to celebrate this. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, it'll be really cool to worship with the good folks at Gloria Day over in Coos Bay. And um, I'll be all together on Zoom together. So um, you'll just be sure to not use this Zoom link to get to um, that service. You, there, We will be sending out the Zoom link that you'll need to get to that service. Also, newsletter articles for the February newsletter are due by January 27th. Are there other announcements this morning? Just uh, unmute yourself and jump in there. Well, not hearing any, uh, go in peace, be the light of Christ, and I will set up.